Hey, what's going on you guys? Jamie here. Finally got a free minute to put together this video for the filter adapter for the Mzuiko 7-14mm f2.8 Pro. The filter adapter designed by my friend Phil Norton. So let me just get started here and let you know that the primary focus of this review is going to be on this portion right here. You can probably find a ton of reviews on the Nissi filter holder system uh, on YouTube and all over the web, I'm sure. But I really wanted to just put uh, the focus on the portion that Phil Norton uh, has designed and manufactures, and that, again, is this right here. So I'll get started right now, and we'll talk about first build material and how it's designed or how it's constructed. So this is created using 3D printing, which everybody hears tons about 3D printing and always wonders, you know, are there any practical applications to it? Well, here's your proof right here. So Phil did the design work, the 3D modeling of it, and then finally the 3D printing of it to create this right here. The way that this works, and I'll go over all the little details of the different aspects of it here while we're going. So first things first, 3D printed uh, at a very high resolution. So what that means is uh, if you see 3D printed objects, sometimes you can see little spacing or lines where the layers are deposited as it's created. And I've grilled Phil several times about the process or the 3D printers that he's using to do this because the, the resolution or the amount of detail in these is really phenomenal. It, to me, it looks like it's injection molded, which would be about as good as you could possibly get when it comes to creating something with plastic with three, uh, is injection molding. And he assures me it's not injection molded, although it sure the heck looks like it. It's such a high quality. The plastic that he's using in the 3D printing process is very, very extremely low reflectivity, which means that you're not going to get uh, stray light bouncing around inside of here and refracting back up against the backside of the filter and then down into the lens, which would cause all, all sorts of nasty aberrations and reflections and glare. And for what you're gonna be using this for, which is basically pointing it straight at the sun, you're gonna to wanna to avoid that. So again, Phil's choice of materials here was perfect because it doesn't allow for really any reflection inside, which is great. Point out also, which might be a little hard to see. You might be able to see a seam right here, but that's where there's this rubber neoprene gasket installed around the lip of this. And there's that serves two purposes, actually. One is that when this is pressed down onto your lens, that rubber gasket, you know, it's got some give to it. It's, uh, it's squishy. So what it does is it compresses down up, you know, so that you can force this down over your lens and then it re-expands back out and seals up against the lens. That does two things. Number one, it creates a very, very snug fit on your lens. Snug enough so that, I'll show you here in a minute, you can actually pick the lens up with the holder itself. Uh, it forms that good of, of a bond to the lens. The other purpose is that it acts as a light seal. And as weird as it sounds, that's actually something you have to be cognizant of, is that light coming in from around where the filter attaches could actually cause issues. And you don't run into that with this setup because of that seal. The next thing is you'll notice that there are four tabs. And let me get this maybe over the top of something so you can see the tabs. So you can see a tab right here. There's one right there. And then there are corresponding tabs at the bottom. Those tabs help you to align the filter holder on your lens so you know how to put it on there. Those tabs seat down in the valleys of the pedals on the built-in lens hood that's on the 7 to 14. And like I said before, that rubber gasket holds it well enough to where I can actually pick up the lens with it. And you can see there's where the tabs locate down in those little valleys of the pedals there. So that's how it sits on. Now, I'm not gonna go over how you attach the rail system. I'm not gonna actually show you me attaching the rail system to the holder or the adapter, but I will explain how it works. It's very simple. It took me all of like, I don't know, two or three minutes to do it. It was really quick. So basically, you've got this filter ring 
or adapter plate that uh, that Nissi makes. And this is the product that uh, Phil does not manufacture, but has designed his product to work in conjunction with. And you've got these rails here, and the rails attached to this ring. You flip it over on the back side, and this is where the fitment, apologies for the notification there, uh, and this is where the, the holder system from Nissi attaches to Phil's component. And you've got these little bumper plates right here on the sides. And the way these work is you've got screws in the front that run through the holders that hold the filters. They run through the plate and then they come through into these little bumpers in the back and they go through slotted holes. So basically you run the screws through and then you push these bumpers so that they snug right up against this part right here and then you tighten the nuts down and that seals it up so hopefully i can get decent focus this way but you can see where they join right there that's how it works and like i said it's a it's a rock solid system i've had no issues with um with it holding well on the camera on the lens it's again solid and i said i wouldn't go over a whole lot of info on the nissi filter holder system itself you know or the nissi filters but um i'll tell you that for those who are not familiar with the brand if you do a little research like i did because i wasn't familiar with the brand you'll find that it's one of the higher rated brands of filters out there so they're just like lee or Koken or any of those other uh, manufacturers really high end the filters come in these nice little leather pouches with magnetic enclosures on them i mean they're just great and i'll put a filter in and show you how it goes in and i always feel weird grabbing these out of the holder just because they are glass and i'm always paranoid i'm going to break one or drop one but they're literally just they slip in and it's snug and it's always freaky to push one in because I'm always afraid something's going to break. But they don't because they're, I don't know if it's a borosilicate glass or what, but they're very strong. And there it is. It slip fits in just like that. And like I said, that gasket's all that's holding it on there. That and the uh, tight tolerances that Phil engineered this with so that it's such a, a snug fit. Now, another thing to point out is that you can rotate it around. So if you did flip from you know portrait to landscape or vice versa you can rotate it um, there's no vignetting as long as you have the filter system pushed all the way down against the lens then you will get no vignetting i know when i first started using it um, i had posted a few pictures and phil pointed out that there was not vignetting but what we were seeing in a couple of my shots was actually part of the rail in the shot when I was zoomed all the way out to seven millimeters. And Phil told me that it was because I didn't have this pressed all the way down against the lens. And sure enough, the next time I went out and shot with it, I made sure that it was seated down there nice and tight and no vignetting at all at seven millimeters. And I've only shot with one filter stacked in this. I can stack two filters in this but I haven't been in a situation where that was something that I wanted to do. And until recently, I only had the one filter because these are a different filter than what I've been using before. Uh, I was using a smaller square filter. These are 100 by 150 millimeter filters. And that is, you know, like I said, not something that I had on hand. So it's not something that I was using before. I've since ordered a, uh, an ND8 neutral density filter and another hard grad that I've got as well. So when I go to Arizona in May with Alex McClure, this will probably get a lot of legwork then. But I haven't had a lot of time to use it here just because we haven't had great weather. It's been really cloudy, no good sunsets or sunrises. But I will share the few shots that I have had a chance to take with it so you can get an idea of what it's capable of. And I'll put notes on the photo so that you can see which uh, couple of photos that I share were straight out of camera and which ones were processed. I mean, you'll probably be able to tell anyways. And also in the description below, uh, there will be a link to my Flickr page 
where I have a gallery with just a couple of photos in it that were shot with this filter system so that you can actually see the images in full resolution to get an idea of what it's capable of. And keep in mind, the images that I'm sharing were only shot using that reverse, that reverse, uh, well, they call it reverse nano IR graduated neutral density. <laughs> it's a reverse graduated neutral density filter. So like I said, the images that I share will be ones that were shot just using that one filter. And here's another thing that is really awesome. If you decide to order from Phil this filter system, which I will have a link to his page below, of course, if you mention that you are referred by me, he'll knock 10% off your order, off of the cost of the, the adapter. He's working on some sort of a deal, I think, with Missy, maybe to be able to get an additional, maybe small um, discount. But I know for right now, he'll knock 10% off the cost of his adapter. So you'd be crazy not to take advantage of that, especially if you're somebody who likes to shoot landscape. And that's it, you guys. Uh, thanks for stopping in. Hopefully this was relatively informative and I'll probably revisit this again once the uh, spring and summer months get here and I have a chance to use it a little more thoroughly. I'll probably do a follow-up review then. So take care, thanks for watching and don't forget, mention me when you decide to order this from Phil and he'll bump 10% off, uh, off the cost of the adapter for you. Uh, take care, bye.